Thanks, guys. A Fox News alert. The United Kingdom raising its terror threat level from substantial to severe. This in response to the crisis in the Middle East as ISIS militants continue executing religious minorities and Westerners in Iraq and Syria. Hello, everyone. I'm Julie Banderas in for Gretchen Carlson today. British Prime Minister David Cameron saying Islamist extremism is the root cause of the terror threat in the UK and that the recent killing of American journalist James Foley is evidence this crisis cannot be ignored. There's no doubt in my mind that ISIL um, is targeting um, uh, all of us in Western, in, in Europe. Meanwhile, the U.S. delivering its first emergency shipment of weapons to Lebanon, part of a broader regional response to help bolster military forces fighting the growing threat from Islamic extremists. Kitty Logan, live from London with the latest. And Kitty, why exactly was the terror threat level raised? Well, Julie, that terror threat now at its second highest level, which effectively means an attack is likely. The government here is very concerned about British citizens who have been traveling to Syria and Iraq to join the Islamic State fighters. It's thought about 500 have gone out to join that conflict. Some have taken up very violent and extreme roles. People here in the UK were horrified to see a man with a British accent apparently involved in the murder of American journalist Jim Foley. And there are real fears about what these radicalized men may do if they return. So the Prime Minister feels tough action needs to be taken now to avert that threat from what he's calling po a poisonous ideology. It's a threat which he says can't be ignored. Now we cannot appease this ideology. We have to confront it at home and abroad. To do this, we need a tough, intelligent, patient and comprehensive approach to, de to defeat the terrorist threat at its source. Tough in that we need a firm security response, whether that is action to go after the terrorists, international cooperation on intelligence, and counterterrorism or uncompromising measures against terrorists here at home. Yeah, the Prime Minister also said that this threat posed by the Islamic State is greater than anything we've seen before, is something that the UK, he said, could be fighting for years and even decades, Julie. And what measures, Kitty, are being taken to counter the threat? David Cameron says there are already some measures in place, but he wants to do much more. He says he wants to introduce laws which would effectively strip British jihadis of their passports and restrict their travel. It is becoming clear that there are some gaps in our armory and we need to strengthen them. We need to do more to stop people travelling, to stop those who, who do go from returning and to deal decisively with those who are already here. The Prime Minister will be addressing Parliament here on Monday to discuss further action. Meanwhile, authorities say they're putting additional security and policing measures in place in public areas and they're urging people to be vigilant, Julie. Kitty Logan in London, thank you so much. And as the UK raises its terror threat alert to the second highest level, that being severe, the Washington Times reporting the US intelligence community has seen a, quote, significant increase in chatter among terrorist organizations as we prepare to mark 13 years since the attacks of September 11th. Let's bring in Mike Baker, a former CIA covert operations officer and president of private intelligence firm Diligence LLC. Mike, always great to have you on. You know, the timing of all of this is frightening. Okay. The 13th 13th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks fast approaching the U.S. government. Uh, one official being quoted as saying that there is a, quote, significant increase in chatter among Islamic terrorist organizations overseas, both on the phone and the Internet lines. This is very similar to what officials saw the days leading before the September 11th attacks. What is the president waiting for? Well, uh, you know, the president's in a position where he sees an awful lot of, of uh, information. You know, we shouldn't you know, to be fair, you know, the administration is, is uh, you know, is, is weighing their options. I think his comment yesterday about they don't have any strategy, he'd obviously like to walk that dog back. Yeah. Uh, I think he'd prefer to say that they've been developing scenarios in the Pentagon and intel community for some time. ISIS didn't just happen overnight. But the, the chatter that you refer to, look, this happens every, every uh, year ahead of 9-11. Um, and part of it... Uh, now I think we can attribute to the fact that, you know, uh, Islamic State has, has been experiencing the, the success that they have. And, uh, you know, we're going to get 
internally, whether it's in Al Qaeda or within other extremist entities, you, you'll get this this chatter that will come up in part because they're trying to, you know, uh, coordinate amongst themselves. They're trying to talk and figure out what this means. Uh, where is the Islamic State going? Um, and we've also got to concern ourselves, though, with the reality that Al Qaeda. Uh, has not gone anywhere. It's not as if they're defeated or there's only a handful of them right. left. So as 9-11 approaches, they still have that mindset. They still want to engage in something. They raised the bar obviously very high with 9-11 and they've always wanted to exceed that bar. Right, Mike. Uh, so that threat hasn't gone away and now, yeah, now we have the Islamic but State to worry about. Here's the concern, okay? So Al-Qaeda has always been a concern, but they not only want to prove something to us mm -hmm. and Western citizens, they want to prove something to ISIS. They forced ISIS out for being too radical. So now you've got ISIS and Al-Qaeda competing against each other to kill Americans. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I mean, th th there is that element here. I wouldn't make too much of the, this internecine fighting mm -hmm. and somehow, you know, they're going to focus on each other and, you know, and, and try to outdo each other. I mean, there, there's an element of that, but ultimately they're going to be ruthlessly pragmatic in the way that they uh, approach this going forward. Look, the mindset of the extremists in Al-Qaeda is, is very little different than the mindset of the extremists in ISIS. They both want to attack Westerners. Now, would uh, Zawahiri, the head of Al-Qaeda, and, and some of his lieutenants, would they like to, to show ISIS that they're still relevant? Well, of course. Right. But every year they would like to show that they're relevant, and, 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 and that supports their, their efforts and their ongoing uh, determination. All right. Another problem that's twofold, obviously, the president uh, being pressured as to whether or not to conduct airstrikes in Syria, that strategy not yet, as he mentioned, not ironed out. But the concern of ISIS spilling over Iraq's borders is real, um, as real as two Americans from Minnesota joining the terror group. Isn't that enough proof that ISIS has already stepped foot on American soil? Sure, it, absolutely. And, um, and I think that the problem that we've got, what we're seeing right now is from the current administration here in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the same sense of urgency in the short-term threat to the homeland as we're seeing from the U.K., and we're seeing from France and Germany. And in part, it's because, you know, credible intelligence shows that, look, the, the, the British have perhaps upwards of five or 600 citizens fighting in Syria and Iraq for ISIS. The French have maybe upwards of 1,000. The Germans have three or 400 fighting over there. Uh, and they, they feel this sense of urgency that it's a short-term threat. We seem to be dealing with it here more in sort of a theoretical that, oh, sometime in the future it could approach our shores. We need to understand this is right. a, an immediate threat, not just something that could happen in the future. All right, Mike Baker, thanks for coming on. Have a great weekend and thank you for taking time. Sure, Meanwhile, there is more disturbing news about the growing threat from ISIS. We are getting reports that at least four Americans held in Syria by the terrorists were waterboarded early in their captivity. And as we mentioned, the U.S. now sending arms to Lebanon to bolster the army there after an incursion by ISIS this week. Listen. Soon, more mortars, grenade launchers, machine guns, and anti-tank weapons will be arriving. And over the coming weeks, more ammunition and more heavy weaponry will be delivered from the United States to the Army on an urgent basis. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, a Fox News national security analyst, joins me now. What does it tell you, first of all, that ISIS is clearly mocking the United States, first by dressing Americans being held captive, such as James Foley, in the orange jumpsuit, much like they do at, at Gitmo, and also the fact that they're now reports that they're being waterboarded. Well, it's, it's partly just thumbing their nose at us, uh, and it's partly brilliant PR. Look, Islamic State is better at public relations than we are for their specific audience. We vet everything until it's plain vanilla. Man, Islamic State, when they do a video, it is red meat in the reddest sense, the blood red. They know their audience. Uh, the Obama administration and most Western powers are tongue-tied, afraid to say anything definitive, afraid to commit to a strategy. Islamic State are, are on fire with belief. And, and by the way, Julie, I listened to Prime Minister Cameron of Great Britain this morning, of the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very impressive, very, very impressive, very honest. He made one crucial mistake that virtually everyone makes. They keep talking about Islamic State's ideology. It's not an ideology. Politicians of ideologies. These people have faith. They have a belief system. They are ablaze with the interpretation of God's word according to their twisted version of this faith. It is vastly more powerful than any ideology, and we should be concerned.
Speaking of concern and the FBI, which is investigating Foley's death, uh, a U.S. government official said to use one of the acronyms for the Islamic State to suggest that there is any correlation between ISL's brutality and past U.S. actions is ridiculous and feeds into their twisted propaganda. Should we even be talking about this then? No, we shouldn't. So let's move on.